So like we talked about back in section four of the course, slicers and timelines are essentially just user-friendly interactive filters that you can layer onto a pivot table. Now they work exactly the same way in the context of pivot charts. They'll just be connected to both the table and the chart. But in this video, we're gonna take things to the next level and create slicers and timelines that can be assigned to multiple pivots and multiple pivot charts at once. And what that means is that a single filter can be used to update an entire collection of pivot tables and charts, which, as we'll cover in the next lecture, is an incredibly easy way to build really nice dynamic dashboards. So here's how it's done. Step one is to select the pivot chart that you want to add a slicer or timeline to. And keep in mind that it really doesn't matter which one you start with if you eventually want all of your charts to be connected. So in this case, let's select our first chart our column chart, head into our Analyze Tools, insert a new slicer, and in this case, why don't we choose Rating as our filter. So there we go, we can drag it over here, and now watch what happens as I manipulate this filter. Only my column chart is adjusting, while all of my other charts in the workbook are remaining static. And that's because when I inserted this slicer, it became tied only to this chart. And so I actually want to enable multi-select here so that we can go ahead and select more than one filter at a time. So that brings us to step two, which is selecting the slicer and drilling into the slicer tools ribbon here and selecting report connections to the left. Now this is absolute gold. It's where we can assign that one slicer to any other pivot table in the workbook or any pivot table that lives on a separate sheet in the workbook. So here we see the four different pivot tables that we've inserted into this sheet. They all live here on the pivot sheet. And you'll notice that only one checkbox is selected, which is titles by genre. That's our first pivot chart here. And all of the others remain unselected, meaning that they're not currently tied to the slicer. This is a good reminder of why it's so important to name pivot tables in an appropriate way. It's because instead of selecting between pivot table one, two, three, and four, now I can easily see which views these are and what they represent. So in this case, let's go ahead and select all of these boxes to tie this one slicer to all four pivot tables and therefore pivot charts in our worksheet. We can press OK. And now since we only have G and PG selected in the slicer, all of our other charts are updating to only show PG and G ratings. Similar case, if we add PG 13, you can see all three update, and so on and so forth. So now we have this one slicer that's controlling all of the charts in our worksheet, which is incredibly valuable. And the same exact process applies for timelines. So we can select our first chart again, go into our Analyze Tools, and insert a timeline. And like we talked about, the only option here is release date, since a timeline needs a date-specific field, and that's our only one. So we can go ahead and press OK, drill into our timeline tools, go into report connections, and again, check the boxes to tie them to all four views and pivot charts in this sheet. So now let's go ahead and adjust. Instead of showing by months, let's show by years and drag it out so it's a bit more easy to work with. And from here, we can drill into a single year, for instance, and this will be most evident in our final chart, which needs some pacing data. So maybe we drag this out to 2005 through 2010. There you go. We can extend it back to 2000. And again, all of our charts that are connected are now updating accordingly. Now it's also worth noting that once you connect slicers or timelines, you'll then be able to control those connections from either the pivot table or the pivot chart side as well. So for example, I can select the chart, go into Analyze Tools, and use this Filter Connections option to determine which slicers or timelines this chart or pivot table is connected to. So essentially, it's doing the exact same thing, just coming at it from the opposite direction, as opposed to starting with the slicer or the timeline. So as you can see, this tells me that this column chart that I've selected is impacted by both the rating slicer and the release date timeline. So there you have it, a really cool way to add even more functionality to your pivot tables and charts 
using slicers and timelines.